Yeah. Um, okay, let's get started. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. Um, yeah, as we all know, um, since the introduce of transformer models and pre-training, um, the uh, the the combination of this large data set, extensor models, and prolonged iterations has led to dramatic increase in com in training compute. Uh, it reaching about like uh, two hundred and seventy five times over just two years, which is more than thirty times larger than the growth rate three years ago. But one from more question is why we want to do this training and why this training could be expensive. A primary factor uh, that drives this advancement is ability to exchange compute power for accuracy. Simply just using large models and data sets or increasing training iterations, um, our model's performance will be enhanced. Moreover, um, as I illustrated here, um, for larger models, you can develop some emergent abilities, such as code completion, semantic parsing, which cannot be found in small models. However, um, for us to be more practical, we want to make our model both efficient and scalable so that we can ensure this scaling. So one factor is to make model more efficient. Um, it's considering both size, speed, and memory which is paramount to um, real-world applications. Um, as we are uh, trying to deploy this um, fundamental models to our daily lives, uh, this uh, more, making model more efficient uh, is more important than just making model larger because it will ensure the quicker access and like response rates from our uh, smartphones and limited devices. Um, in the spectrum of making mix, mixture of expert model more efficient, um, it might means to combine both different parallel strategies, like expert parallelism, model parallelism, and the data parallelism. Because if we have, uh, as I suggested before, using the mixture of expert models here, um, using just data parallelism means you will distribute all experts on one devices, which will, pre which will exhibit very large memory consumption and the extra parallelism will allow for special alloc allocation of each expert and modal parallelism will facilitate division of modal across multiple devices. And combining these two these strategies can inform you a norm, like a better converse uh, throughput, you know, in a more um, practical solution. Besides to making this more uh, efficient uh, from the engineer perspective. We also want to make model more scalable. It means um, we want to continue, when we adding more compute like data and model size, we want to ensure our model can continuously achieve a higher accuracy. One um, bad example uh, could be a naive tuned uh, mixture of expert or a linear transformer um, counterbalance. For instance, when we're trying to fine tune IME models uh, naively, we train on uh, with some uh, prefi prefix language model objective. It may it may be because the we have diverse experts in the MOE architecture, each may specialize in different setting. And given that we have a lot of um, parameters versus a dense model, it may accompany uh, overfitting issues more severe than a dense model that were prevented to be uh, prevented to be used very efficiently in the fine tuning setting. This is also one of the issues we're trying to tackle in this work. Um, more broadly, my previous work can be divided to like making model efficient through model compression, making model scal more scalable through post and pre training, and also with an integration of visual language model. And before we get into what we did in this work, uh, we can do a very quick recap on the mixture of XMR models, why we want to use them and what will be the benefits of them. Um, when we talk about mixture of XMR models, usually we mean we refer to the sparsely gated mixture of experts. And it means it will use um, in the laptop figure, it, it is uh, a Tra normal transformer block consists of just multi-head attention at the FFN. 
and on the right it will be um mixture of expert models. Usually we will put this layer, um, the MOE layer interlaid with a normal transformer block to prevent some token dropping issue. Um, but during the inference train uh during the forward pass and backward pass, we will only activate top K experts so that you can use uh just like take top one as example, you can only activate just one FFN in the uh, real computing, which is uh, equivalent or comparable to a normal transformer block. But you still need to do all gather all to all communication to ensure you get all the information after the MOE layer. The benefits of this MOE, as I said before, if we just do top one or top two conditional activation, you will only like activate two or one FFN in the forward pass. That makes it uh, have equivalent uh, flops uh, versus a dance model. But uh, given that you add more um, parameters as you make the model more, com uh, more capable, uh, it will achieve advanced performance in the pre-training. Uh, as I said here, the y-axis will be the uh, number of flops in the training. The y-axis will be one example in the pre-training set. Uh, when you just scale it up with larger size, you can see this model exhibit scalable performance, uh, continuous issue better performance while you add more compute. Um, this is just a naive example why we want to use this, but it is also different um, categories of this mixture of expert models. One easy way to categorize them as to uh, define by different targets. Um, as I said before, um, you can view this uh, mixture of the expert as a way to scale the model, efficiently scale the model app by using this conditional compute. From the other perspective, you can view it um, as each expert can be specialized to um, handle different tasks. And then so that you can use by, le by le leveraging this specialization, uh, you could also add the capacity of the model. As I said here, so one could just use task information to do the static routing. Um, then during the inference, you can just preload for the specific task and that will ensure you better efficiency gain. Um, but from the other angle, you can, you can also do the token routing, let your token to choose which expert uh, it wants to go to. And then it will be uh, choose dynamically. And we, if we dispatch, uh, the tokens evenly across the expert, that it will give you better um, scalability. And that will, and this computer will be dynamic. It adds more uh, capability to the model, but it will also accompany with uh, some instability issues in the routing. Um, the other routing strategy difference um, is whether we want to use the token to choose the router or we want the router to choose the token. Um, Generally, we usually use the same um, ellipse in the left figure. We, you, we let each token to choose which router it wants to route to. Um, and it uh, will select uh, the um, expert with the highest probability and use that to execute um, um, the hidden dimension for this token. On the, on the other spectrum, if we just do encoding, we could ask the router to see all the tokens and, the, and let the router to decide which token you want to process. And in, in this setting, you won't have any issue of token dropping, but it will, this setting is tricky to be applied to uh, autoaggressive decoding. So generally we still use the right, uh, the left configure, uh, which is uh, use token to decide um, which router to go to. We call it token choice. On um, the other, but this, Conditional uh, computing and efficient scalability is the benefits of this mixture of expert models, but it also has many potential issues to prevent it to be um, well, like widely used. One known issue is the token dropping. Uh, as I listed here in the left figure, uh, usually for uh, input with different tokens, we, let, we will evenly distribute each token to, we want to evenly distribute each token to the expert so that each expert will only uh, be processed about um, its, cap uh, its capacity times top K tokens. 
and we can distribute this work called evenly so that the compute of, of the MOE models could be comparable to a dense model. But given that we don't, we add the capacity to each expert so that it will not process all the tokens all the sequence at one time, some tokens could be dropped in this process. It means it won't be processed by any expert, and that will give you some um, dramatic instabilities because the output is not even. And the other issue is uh, the training instability. Given that you have the skating function and the uh, mixture of the expert, even use similar configure, uh, one similar configure can lead to total different uh, runs. One could be unstable and one could be stable. And different techniques like uh, GALU um, or like uh, Rooming Square Root Norm, they could improve the like quality of the any model of uh, a mixture of experts, but it may also like inherit some instability issues. Also, given that this MOE models usually have a lot more parameter sizes versus a dense model, it will also make it tricky to be fine-tuned. Um, given that if you the data set you want to fine-tune is small, you will usually have the overfitting issues. Okay, so that's a pretty much all about the mixture of expert models. So right now, following the big horizon, we want to see if this type of mixture of expert models could, uh, could actually be scalable. It means when we add more compute, is it can it consistently achieve better performance in a full spectrum? By uh, in the full spectrum, I mean for both pre-training, fine-tuning, and few or zero shot adaptation. As I'm showing here, um, the MOE model usually give you better, much better pre-training performance. It can reach similar loss of a, like as I say here. The y the axis is the training time. The y axis is uh, the the negative log probabilities. You can see a, a switch based model reaches uh, the same performance um, of a standard counterpart with seven times speed up. It will even uh, reach the same performance of a larger size stance model with like two x speed up. But this mesh in the log probability may not directly translate to the performance gain you have in the downstream adaptation. One is an example as the fine tuning. So through, um, I use like a different color here to suggest you may have some mixed performance during fine tuning. One uh, common issue is the overfitting. Um, really, as I see here, uh, even though this um, sparse model can for converge much faster than the end, a dance model, it may also have this overfitting issue that the validation is much worse than a, a dense counterpart, given that you have more parameters to be fine tuned on. So some your, your strategy will be you will freeze the gating or FFN or non-FM part, and you will experience expert dropout balancing loss, uh, or adjust the capacity factors, or use different precision and the gating function. So all of this create extra burden in your hyperparameter search. But it may also lead to mixed performance due to the, if the downstream is very different than what you see the example in the pre-train, it will also have instability issues and not promise a good performance. And when it comes to zero shot and few shot, the situation may get worse. Um, I list uh, this, so this is the MMU direct, um, uh, zero shot performance comparison. Uh, this is like uh, a multi choice problem. Uh, and here is just different training, uh, different uh, model size given per given the same uh, token. So you can see the uh, dense and sparse model will have comparable flops. But when it comes to the zero shot uh, adaptation, this um, it, it is the MOE model exactly. Uh, explicitly exhibit this very um, poor scalability. Uh, one potential reason is, is the generalization gap. As I say, as I use one of the example in the uh, evaluation, like let's just ask it to recommend a movie given the choices. It's do not know the format of the answer and start to repeat the up, repeat the input. So that could potentially attribute to uh, the, um, the generalization gap. Um, and we also observe more 
drop the tokens during this zero shot adaptation versus pay training, which may suggest the uh, evaluation set we are currently using is much different from what we what the model has been seeing in the pre training data set. We are trying to um, revisit, use some technique to improve the generalization, like um, people suggest in um, prompt training, uh, just to use give uh, the um, so all the model I discussed before, which was a type of encoder decoder model, it consists of an encoder and a decoder, and it was portraying on the span corruption. So that um, it has some like discrepancy between zero shot generalization um, versus a normal causal language model objective. So people found using a, a language model objective could largely enhance the generalization abilities. Um, we we'll try. We we'll also tried that technique here, but uh, we see uh, like before you the the scalability law is kind of like when you scale the model up, uh, the sparse model up, you don't have actually any gain. But here you do have some performance gain, but the gap still persists. Um, given that like the model may still not uh, may learn the formatting better, but not still didn't get the capabilities. As 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 I show here, the model let generate in the vector format um, by answer E, but this is not the answer we want or we want the model to give. So the other strategy, what we used in this work uh, is called instruction tuning. Um, it was first introduced for dance models. Um, basically, we want the model uh, to be trained with instructions coupled with many tasks, and then uh, for an unseen task, we just give the model the same or similar form format of instructions and wanted to generalize to um, unseen task types. And it will first model to generalize better without without any training um, and, and, and enable better controllabilities. Um, and this uh, this introduce of instruction training is also scalable when we scale uh, the number of tasks you will consistently uh, have better again in the head out evaluations across different types. As you can see here, you have the scalability. Basic, basically, when you add both uh, the number of tasks and the model size, the model is permanent to uh, give you better performance. Um, so given that in mind, we want um, we just uh, have inside to apply the same technique about insertion training to make sure of X model in this work. Uh, we found that after you apply, so we start with just use all um, possible number of tasks, 1,600, um, which introduced in the flamty paper, um, to fine tune our mixture of X model following the same recipe as dance model. We found that after you do this instruction training, uh, this flame MOE models exhibit much better um, generalization performance, especially in zero and few shot setting. As I said here, uh, this is an example I showed before. You can see here, um, it starts to reason about the task uh, by using this problem like, like sync by step, step by step, and find some similarities between the, um, uh, the given um, movies and then like found the most similar movies uh, in the descript in the instruction versus the options and give the correct answer. So that may illustrate the process of why this um, instruction training could be helpful. It may like uh, help the router to root better and learn the format, both the format and capabilities for this MOE model adaptation. Um, and we also say that what we want like when we increase the training compute, we want uh, the model consistently have a better games um, and it should outperform a flight. So it even outperform an instruction to the dance model. One interesting thing um, as I show here, so this is the, the few shot evaluation using MMU um, Big Bench uh, reasoning and QA, which is a develop, um, all, each of this will be a evaluation to consist of multiple tasks. Um, one interesting thing we see uh, in this um, uh, by applying instruction training to make sure of expert models uh, is when we uh, see the, the model with similar size, 
uh, like a T5 base versus uh, MOE base, you can see the improvement um, of extraction churning is much larger than what is we do in the um, dense model counterparts. And this performance improvement for large models is larger than what you have for small models. Um, like after this, uh, we dive, now we know like by using the large amount of uh, instruction training data can, can um, dramatically improve the generalization performance for this mixture of expert models. But then we want to dive into more details, like what factors in this instruction training makes this flame even better. Um, one application with that is by applying different number of tasks. Um, using, uh, uh, as you can see here, using 10 tasks, you still, you already get some gains by regularizing all the tasks in the same format, but the gains not that consistent. But when introducing more tasks like 100 and beyond that, you all have more gains and the performance improvement is consistent with the number of tasks. Um, the other scaling uh, factor could be scale with number of experts. Uh, we try to use that as well for uh, a dance uh, for a base model. Um, as I say here, so uh, the 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 right will be uh, the head of evaluation, and uh, in the future way, and the right will be uh, the future way, and the right will be in the future way. As I say here, scaling with a number of experts. Uh, with more experts. Um, so more experts means more parameters and it more prone to the affecting issue. And uh, so we want so we saw um, when you scale the number of experts, um, it may plateau around like six, uh, 64 um, experts. And the proposal won't, won't be improved that much after that. Also another factor will be the routing decisions. Uh, we try different routing uh, strategies, so like I said before, expert choice. So here, the tricky thing is you use expert choice and the uh, encoding and use still use uh, the top K and the decoding to prevent this uh, leaking issue. Um, advanced uh, routing strategy versus switch, switch is top one. Uh, the, state, the ST stand for uh, the STMOE, uh, which is use Z loss as uh, the balancing loss. And expert choice, is, uh, as I said before, use uh, the expert to select which tokens it to be rooted and prevent uh, the token dropping issue. As I see here, uh, advanced uh, rooting like stable STMOE and expert choice will give you consistent performance gain. And when you do the fine tuning, it's better to equip to with what you did in the pre training. Use the same balancing loss and same configure. Free gate may give you some benefits, but it's similar to what you just offer is anything. So right now we know like a, like a good recipe could be for the model size less than 11 billion. The next thing we did is trying to scale this model up by using the largest uh, MOE we have so far, uh, which is STMOE 32 billion. Uh, one thing we found is uh, it's it's kind of uh, just um, a uncorrect set in the T5X. Basically, as I said before, when you combine expert parallelism, model parallelism, and data parallelism, uh, you only need to do, you need to do the all to all uh, gathering after, before you enter the MOE part and after you enter the MOE part. But within uh, the, uh, the mixture of expert layer execution, you only need to do the all gather versus the all to all, and that will give you 10% gain, uh, what we did in this part. So with all that in mind, uh, we we successfully scale efficiently scale uh, like flying ST uh, STMOE thirty two balloon, um, and it expects much better performance gain versus a flying thirty two billion model with only one third of the compute. But you could still see there's a still a large gap between the um, the largest flame palm model. Especially in some reasoning task with uh, COT. Another factor we also look at is uh, is that just attribute to the encoder decoder network versus decoder only network. Uh, we try to use um, instruction training for the uh, decoder only mixture of X model as well, uh, like Glenn. Uh, it also exhibits better performance 
as people seeing in normal dance models. Um, but due to the resource limit, we didn't include all the glam corner parts here. Um, there are also failure cases uh, using this extraction and training to help MOE generalize better. One failure case is the multilingual case. Uh, so here is a FLAM palm 32 billion and, and FLAM STM, we largest one you we can have 32 billion. Um, in two of the multilingual cases, it largely fall behind the dance counterparts. We attribute that to the, the pre-trained data we're trying to use here, just following what we have in the C4, um, which may like the, the different languages may exhibit larger token dropping issues and uh, in the MOE, and may, which may make this re, make this uh, adaptation even harder. And in the intersection training, we don't have make, we don't have the multilingual multilingual um, training examples to cross this gap. Uh, another filler cases we have uh, is by it's trying to directly uh, upscale a dance model to a mixture of extra models uh, using STMOE scheme. Um, as I say here, uh, so the the um, total line, the, the wrong line will be the dance models. And um, this will be uh, like equivalent size MOE models from base size 30 to 34 experts. And this is where we trying to directly upscale uh, a dance model to a MOE models but it exhibits large gap when we try to do that in the instruction tuning phase. But people find some successful case when we try to do this upscale in the pre-training phase. Um, so that's pretty much about all we did in this um, FLAM MOE paper. Um, but there are also some future directions I want to introduce to you. Um, some interesting thing people find uh, is According to what we did in the field cases, people trying to construct these small models, sparse models directly from dance model in different ways. Uh, one thing uh, is using using this dance model to initialize the weight for a sparse model, but you might want to ensure you don't want to activate just top one um, top one gating that we uh, give you some like uh, that may lead to the uh, extra collapse. Uh, in the pre-training, and you also want to ensure the in the upscaling phase, you want the pre-training data is the same as you did in the uh, while you pre-train the dance model. Also, people suggest find uh, you can actually just do the ensemble and pre-train different um, different dance models in different domain and trying to ensemble the rails together, which will also give you gains uh, during uh, during the adaptation especially in the language model setting. Another interesting direction people are trying to pursue is to design a better architecture um, versus uh, the token choice MOE. Uh, so right now, as I said before, usually for a MOE layer, we will just put, we'll put it in the interleaved way. Um, after a self-attention, you put um, a mixture of experts or and uh, interleaved with a normal transformer block, attention coupled with FFN, but it could, potentially be more advanced strategy to put uh, this uh, MOE layers more efficiently and exhibit better performance gain uh, by using new architecture search. And more recently, uh, people have found use a, um, a, a soft MOE, which means you will combine the, uh, you will do, you will do uh, with her some of the tokens and process each uh, with her some in the, uh, in a stall setting to prevent coven dropping. Uh, and that is, and people show this exhibit uh, advanced results in uh, scaling a vision transformer. But uh, but um, this uh, weighted average uh, has a similar issue of expert choice. Um, if we want to apply this to autoregressive setting, we want to prevent um, the, current in, the current token to see the future informations. So that will present additional challenge for this soft MOE to be used in language setting. Um, I think, yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much about uh, today's talk. Uh, thanks everyone.